How's it going everyone? John here and welcome back to another Streamlabs OBS tutorial. If you're new to the channel or new to the series, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content that I've created to help you guys with streaming. Now for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the event list here in Streamlabs OBS. But there's a little thing that we have to do first and that is to actually go to Streamlabs.com. So what we're going to do is sign into our Streamlabs. So if you go to Streamlabs.com, you log into your account based on wherever you're going to be streaming. Some of the settings are going to be a little bit different after we get to our, where we're going. So what we're going to do then is click on all widgets and we're going to go to event list. So depending on where you're streaming, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and any other type of services that Streamlabs offers, some of these things are going to be a little bit different in terms of what the events are going to be able to be used. So do keep that in mind when I go through the rest of this video. So first things first, you have different themes. So right now I'm using the solid theme. I prefer solid over some of the others, but go ahead and take a look at some of these other themes and figure out which one works best for you. Then go ahead and choose the theme color, and then you can then select what you want to have be able to be pulled into your event list. So the event list basically can display donations, follows, subs, hosts, stickers. If you're on Twitch, it can do bits, it can do raids. You know, you guys can also do, um, like I said, hosts. And then if you're on Mixer, you can do the stickers and the effects or not. Yeah, the effects. And then you can also do the super chats and everything over on YouTube and so on and so forth. So like I said, some things are going to change as you go throughout the, the setup. But once you get to the initial part to where you can choose how many max events you want to show, this is basically how many are going to be able to display at one time. And you can have a max of 10. I personally feel between two and three is pretty good. If you're trying to keep everything really clean and you just want to show the most recent, then you can just do one as the one that will just display. You can choose a background color. I haven't touched it. Text color. I haven't touched it, but you can always mess with that too. You have a wide range of different types of fonts that you can choose. You can do font size. You can choose the animation, animation speed, and everything like that. So the animation speed will be for this guy. And then if you're wanting to also have it to where the information goes from like the bottom and going up, or you can do from top going down. That just matters on how you have the X and Y. So X, if we click on that one and go to save, what this is going to do is this will keep it normal. So it will start from top going down. And then if you were to flip it and then save it, this will then have it going from the bottom going up. So for me, I just leave them both unchecked. If you want to keep the event history always showing, then you can do that. Or if you want it to disappear, after a little bit of time, it will disappear and then it will come back when another one populates. So once you have everything set up how you want, go ahead and save the settings. And then we're going to go back to our Streamlabs OBS. So once we're on here, what we're going to want to do is create our scene and then go to sources and click on the plus. From here, you're going to be looking for event list under the widgets. And then we're going to click add source, give it a name, click add source, and then we'll be able to see what we just created. Now, the reason why we had to go through all those extra steps is because for some reason, this does not want to work in terms of having the source settings right there for you. At the time of this video, it could be a bug and that's, that's stuff that can happen. So at least you guys know the workaround to be able to use it and everything like that. So it's good to know that extra knowledge in case you need to use it. But the only thing that is working right now is source. So basically I leave this as it is, but if you run into some problems where certain things aren't displaying, like say you have three set up, but only two are showing, or you have like a white background box in between each one, go ahead and try using the refresh cache. And that should try to help with this to kind of clean it up a little bit. Maybe it's just got something that's causing some weirdness and you just want to try to clear it up. But once we have all that done, click done here. And what we can do now is move this guy around and we can also increase it, decrease it, however you want it to be. But that's pretty much how you set up the event list. Very simple to do and it's a really clean way of being able to display whenever people do certain actions for the channel versus it just being that one time where someone goes and does a donation or someone follows or someone hosts and stuff like that. I personally like the event list. And I think it's something that you guys might find useful as well. But if you guys have any questions or if you want to talk about it more, let's go ahead and talk inside the comments. If you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content. And 
You can always reach out to me if you guys have any questions, but I'll see you guys in a future video. And thank you so much again for watching. Take care.